band, and we originally started thinking in terms of, a, a, I guess it was enjoyment for seniors. I wanted to do a little bit of jamming on a Wednesday morning, and it grew, and people started telling us that maybe we should share our, our uh, music with others. And so today, of course, we are busy every Wednesday, whether it's a four or five week month, and sometimes in between Sundays and the odd time when I can get the gang together. And we play at nursing homes and schools and uh, various other places. And next week we're going to go to the, uh, uh, the public school and we have a grade, I think it's one and two, uh, about 40 or 50 students and they just love it. We, we, of course we change our format, we play everything from the uh, the wheels on the bus go round and round to uh, Old McDonald and things like this, and the children uh, participate. But you see, we are limited at this point, and, and I see the, the community radio as something that perhaps will broaden this, this uh, scope, and maybe we'll be able to reach more, more school children in, in the uh, community than we do now. We're all, we only have that one Wednesday a month that we can go to the schools. So this is one area that I think the community station would be good. Um, before I leave, I'd like to say something about um, a segment of our society that very often we, we don't see and we don't hear about. <clears throat> These are the people that are, they live alone. Uh, many of them don't venture outside of their homes. They're physically handicapped visually impaired and I think with a community station we could probably pump music into their homes music that they would be able to recognize from a bygone era um, church services and as Rod said in his uh, presentation we'd be able to t uh, take community events sports activities uh, local events and certainly um, send them right into the the homes of these people, you, you know as well as I do that the, these, some of these people, their lives are, the quality of, of their lives are pretty, pretty low. And I think we could bring much joy to that segment of our society. And I've seen a lot of activity tonight, and I've seen a lot of it, of course, over the last 20 odd years of young people, all the, the value that this would bring in terms of our, to our community. And I think certainly a, um, a radio station would bring uh, an enhancement and, and, and an enrichment to our community immeasurably. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next, I'd like to say a few words about James B. Douglas. James B. Douglas is one of Canada's uh, veteran leader play, leading players in television, film, and on stage. He is also a drama dramaturge producer with the varied career in the United Kingdom and in the United States. He has spent over 25 years developing a new Canadian work, including the six-week run War Brides, a musical, at the Neptune Theatre in Halifax. His production was also staged in Orangeville, Hamilton, and in Guelph. His Hollywood career includes the PSI Factor, Doc, Soul Food, and Walt Disney Films. In the original MASH, he played Colonel Miller. In Canadian films, he starred in Drylanders and Men with Brooms, as well as many CBC television films. James lives in Bell Fountain and is presently developing a solo theater piece called an evening with W. O. Mitchell. So, James. Thank you. After hearing that bio, I think I'd just better go home and watch television. <laughs> when I read in the promo that James Douglas was going to re reminisce about the early days of radio, I thought they meant my father, whose name is James Douglas, or my grandfather, whose name is James Douglas, because I know I've got a few wrinkles, but I'm not that old. <laughs> However, uh, I guess I am here because I'm a living, walking link with some of that great radio tradition of uh, Canada, which probably you don't know about. Certainly as a young boy, 
I grew up listening to CBC Radio and Jake and the Kid and all of the wonderful actors, John Draney and whatnot. So imagine my thrill when, as a young actor, I came back from London, England, and found that in the early 60s that radio in Canada and in Toronto was still vibrant. And it was just an extraordinary thing. Probably not many people, none of you know, maybe some of you do, that CBC Radio was considered the best in the, not in, in Canada or the US, the best in the world. And John Draney, who was one of our great actors in Canada, was considered one of the finest and greatest radio actors ever produced in the world. Our directors, Andrew Allen, Essa Young, were considered the greatest radio directors in the world. And I'm not being a nationalist, which I am, but it was absolutely true. So can you imagine a young actor coming back, and there I was, finding that I was working with some of these great, great names. You see, the wonderful thing about radio and why I'm here is to try, I don't have to encourage you, is the fact, and Eric Nagler said it, it's all about imagination, isn't it? The radio is imagination. And I'm listening to that CD and I'm hearing all of those wonderful voices, and I'm sure you're doing the same thing. I'm picturing Eric Nagler as this young, slim, young fella with this wonderful whimsy. I'm hearing David Spencer and I see a big fella, you know, who's got a nice voice, young voice, but he's a really big fella, and maybe he's about 50 years old. You see, it's all in the imagination, isn't it? And that's what radio is all about, and so this is not just news, what you're doing. It's letting everybody use their imagination. Uh, just a cup, by the way, I played Colonel Merrill in MASH, and some of those uh, television things I did in Canada, although they were US shows. The thing is, actors in Canada now, we have to do a lot of movies of the week which are funded by Hollywood. Luckily, I have also had a long career uh, doing Canadian television, uh, of which unfortunately we were in a bit of a slump. But I'm supposed to talk about radio, aren't I? Anyway, some wonderful things that happened to me as a young actor. One of our great Canadian actors was known as an actor who had two performances, Teeth In and Teeth Out. <laughs> And I wasn't told this, and I was doing one of my first CBC radio dramas, and he was right next to me with his script, and he was playing two parts. And he was this wonderful voice, he was playing this part, blah, blah, and then I did mine, and something like that. And then I said, I click, and then he was shaking like this. <laughs> so there he was without his teeth. And I, then they went in again. And then the next part he played was this wonderful voice again. Well, you can imagine as a young actor, I'd find it very difficult to concentrate on my role because all I heard was teeth going in and out. <laughs> teeth going in and out. Another one of our actors was very good at impersonation. And we did a lot of two-hour dramas. And we did them at the Mutual um, Street Studios. And across the road was the Celebrity Club with a pub. And this one actor had a couple of little things in the first hour. And then he wasn't on for 45 minutes. So he went across the road for a drink, and he had one or two drinks too many. And it's now about uh, an hour and 15 minutes later, and the second part of his role is coming up, and he's nowhere to be seen. But one of the actors was a great impersonator. So he read his role as well, like the other actor. And it was absolutely seamless. Even though this guy came back drunk, he was able to take over, and you could not tell the difference between the actor who was impersonating him and the drunken actor who had been across the road. <laughs> One of our great, Andrew Allen was probably one of the greatest, and he was an absolute mentor of mine. I remember as a young boy hearing the, uh, directed by Andrew Allen, starring John Draining, music by Lucio Agostini, all of these names, weren't they? Morris Serden, and there I was with all of these wonderful people, and Andrew Allen. Now, Andrew Allen was a great drinker too. We always rehearsed before we went on the radio, and Andrew, sometimes had probably had a little bit too much drink. And during rehearsals, we would see him doing this. And we think, uh-oh, Andrew's pissed again. But do you know that after 20 minutes, he would go like this and he'd said, you know, on page 23, I think that you, could you take that a little bit down? Now, the music, we need to come in two seconds later. Now, ba 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 Direction, 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 direction. And then we, we'd go on and do it. It was wonderful, wonderful days. 
So I guess I'm kind of a link a little bit to what you folks are doing, which is using your imagination and going back to the radio. Alan McPhee, for many years, had a show called Eclectic Circus. And he talked about all of you folks out there as all of you wonderful people out there in vacuum land. Remember that? Right? He called you all vacuum land because, you know, the, the radio is made of little vacuum things. Anyway, so I'm here to say good luck, all of you. Erin, is it Erin or Erin? I'm hearing two things tonight. It's Erin District High School, right, Erin? And yet it's Erin Radio. Oh, it's Erin if you live here, and it's Erin if you live out of town. Oh, well, I've been here for 22 years, so it's still Erin. Right. right. So anyway, good luck to all of you Erin people in vacuum land. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much, James. That was really great. Um, next, I'd like to introduce to you all uh, Reverend J Jacob, Jacob Birch. Um, Reverend Jacob Birch is a gifted public speaker both at the Aaron Village Alliance Church, where he is the senior pastor, and also in the community. He chaired the 2004 federal election candidates debate in Aaron, the Village Cafe Variety Nights in 2004 and 2002, and often makes presentations to fellow members of the Aaron Rotary Club. He has written for newspapers and magazines, including Next Wave, Christian Week, Alliance Life, and Channels. Today, he reports on Aaron Town Council meetings for our local newspaper, The Aaron Advocate. And uh, his youth ministry has made a positive influence on many young people. He has a passion to see the youth of Aaron grow spiritually, seek positive goals, and make healthy lifestyle decisions. Reverend Jacob would like to contribute to Aaron Community Radio by hosting Talk Back, a phone-in show where he stimulates discussion on faith, politics, and culture. So, Reverend Jacob. Uh, universities, hospitals, homes for the aged, homes for the infirm, recreation associations, hostels, hospices, all of these started by um, churches as services to the community. The problem is today that the church, I think, in many ways has become so heavenly minded that we're no longer any earthly good, if I can use that old saying. And I think that one service the Aaron Radio Network can provide to the churches, to the colleagues and the people that I work with, is to help our churches hear the needs and the heartbeat of this community. Uh, we did a little phone survey, perhaps some of you may have even fielded a few of our calls, in the earlier part of this year. And one of the reasons I think uh, the Aaron Radio Network needs to happen is that as we called out into the community, made about mm, 1,500 calls out, uh, we found that the uh, largest need, when we asked people a number of questions, one of the questions we asked is, you know, what is the biggest need in Erin? And uh, their response invariably was sewage treatment. <laughs> uh, so we said, okay, all right, well, what is the biggest need that uh, churches or community groups uh, might be able to do something about? And invariably, about one in four people responded what we really need in Erin is a sense of community. And I think the Erin Radio Network is just what the doctor ordered when it comes to helping the people of this community, the people who say Erin and the people who say Erin, develop a better sense of community. Um, I visit with seniors, I visit with new people who move to the area, I visit with young families, with people who have retired and moved to this beautiful home in the hills only to find that for all their tax dollars they still don't get garbage pickup, you know, uh, and invariably I find people who say, you know what, I drive to work in the dark, I drive home in the dark, and I haven't met my neighbors in four and a half years. And my hope is that the Aaron Radio Network will be a kind of glue that will hold this community together and begin to draw people out. That as that mom who is at home, they've saved up all this money to move out here, that as she's there working and this neighbor's gone and that neighbor's gone and the neighbors on the other side of the street, they're all gone during the day and she's home alone with the kids, she'll begin to hear a little bit through the Aaron Radio Network 
of what this community is all about. And uh, that's uh, why I'm involved. That's what I hope the Erin community can, uh, can really challenge our churches here to really reconnect with the needs of our community. One of the one of the benefits I see the area community also providing to the churches of our area is um, to begin to offer their services, not in the sense of what we do on Sunday morning, but in the sense that uh, a lot of our churches have tremendous resources, that they have a hard time marketing, they have a hard time letting people know what they have available. So for instance, um, my family has suffered quite a significant loss in the last year. My uh, father-in-law dropped out of a heart attack at the age of 60 in March. And uh, we as a church have offered uh, on a couple of occasions uh, a whole day long Saturday seminar on grief. Uh, but not everyone can come out on a Saturday morning uh, for that. But if it could be uh, taped and then replayed uh, throughout the schedule and people could access those type of resources when they are able to. Um, I know a number of couples who've moved to this area for whom the move to the green hills of Erin is it. This is their last chance. They're giving this whole marriage and family thing one more kick at the can. And uh, so we've offered uh, marriage seminars, uh, all kinds of stuff for parenting, all kinds of things like that, that I think something like the Aaron Radio Network would do a great job of deploying those resources free of charge into people's home. They can access it when they want to. They can turn it off when, they, you know, when, uh, when they're done listening to it or whatever. But it's just another way that we can support people in the relationships and the decisions they've made in their life. So I'm excited about the Air and Radio Network. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how it blossoms and grows and just hope that you'll be uh, a part of things. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Reverend Jacob. Um, next, I would like to introduce to you all and say a few words about Brent um, Stanton. Brent is an actively involved, is very actively involved, from what I can read here, in uh, Aaron. He plays and coaches hockey and soccer for the youth. He teaches drums and many other instruments to many of Aaron's youths. His music ministry takes him to many towns across Ontario. His favorite musicians are Phil uh, Drizkal, Clay Cross, and Steve Camp. Uh, by day, Tim Alberts teaches secondary school music students in Toronto. By night, he produces numerous local artists in his Limehouse Music Studio located south of Erin, if any of you are wondering. Um, he is presently working, writing a recording, writing and recording a musical soundtrack for the Canadian film, for a Canadian film, my bad. <laughs> um, what Can We Do is a music CD Call, uh, collaborated between Brent and Tim, who produced and uh, produced the album. The proceeds of the music CD goes to help rebuilding war-torn Eastern Europeans. Um, Tim wrote the music and the lyrics for the songs Now I Know, which they will perform for you right now. So, um, gentlemen...
Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Okay, um, before I go on, I just first like to uh, introduce my uh, co-host Jason. I almost forgot. But he's very important. <laughs> and um, actually, Jason is a very active uh, member of our school community. He's um, the current students council president and also the past music council president, and also uh, plays an active role in the sports community. Um, moving on, I'd next like to introduce to you Eric Nagler. Eric Nagler is uh, my personal childhood idol, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> um, uh, since 1978, Eric has devoted his heart and soul to the art of family music, perform performing before live audiences and TV across the continent. His humorous antics and down-home music combined with a superb instrumental ability to have made, to have made fun of one of the North, North America's favorites. In his entertaining career, which spans three decades, Eric has performed on radio countless times, telling stories, singing songs, and playing music. Uh, he, started in a, he starred in a syndicated TV family sitcom called Eric's World, my favorite, <laughs> and in the cho children's show, The Elephant Show, each of which uh, ran for years across Canada and the United States. A master of many instruments, from the well-known banjo, mandolin, guitar, and fiddle, to the not so well-known psaltery, <laughs> sorry, <Good>. sure, <laughs> musical saw, spoons, and bodhran. <laughs> <laughs> you can fix it later. <laughs> to the truly bizarre sewer phone <laughs> and nose flute. <laughs> <laughs> Eric shares the joy of music making with kids and their parents. Eric has half a dozen recordings to his credit, most of which have won Parents' Choice Awards and Juno nominations for Best Children's Album in 1986, 1990, 1994, and 1995. In April 1999, Eric spent a month in Bosnia performing for war-affected children and families. As a supporting artist living in the area, Eric Nagler is anxious to support local radio. Quoting Eric, Radio is an 
undersued and <laughs> underestimated artistic median. Stories without pictures simulate our imagination and artistic sense. Radio drama is missing in today's culture and there is very little radio for children. I would like to help create programs to make Aaron Community Radio unique as a local artist medium. Eric. <laughs> I guess it was, there was one guy that radio was not for, and that was my dad. I remember when, uh, as a kid, I still remember the times when we would all sit around the radio and watch the radio. While, uh, well, for me, it was Tuesday nights from WOR 7.30 before I had to, uh, had to go to bed as uh, from out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. <clears throat> but earlier than that, we would listen to Jack Benny. And Jack Benny is he's the master of the take. You know what the double take is? The double take is the take is <laughs> and someone would come in, uh, Rochester would come in and he'd say, Hello, Mr. Benny! And and Jack Benny would go, Rochester. And then there would be this silence. And we'd all just scream in laughter. I, mean, we, I could tell what Rochester was doing, or I could make up what Rochester was doing. My father would go, what is that? That's terrible. I don't know what's going on here. And I think he probably was the only person in the world who, for whom television was good. For me. <laughs> and, and when Jack Benny came on TV, he would, oh, that's a riot. But I think for the rest of us, we're really missing um, that ability to stretch our minds, you know? Which this song is, is not about. I just wanted to say that, and I, I don't have a song that goes with that, so here's the song. Many, many years ago, when I was 23, I was married to a widow who was pretty as could be. This widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair of red. My father fell in love with her, and soon the two were wed. This made my dad my son-in-law, which changed my very life. My daughter was my mother, cause she was my father's wife. To complicate the matter, even though it brought me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. This little baby then became the brother-in-law to dad. So he was my uncle, and that made me very sad. For if he was my uncle, then it also made him brother to the widow's grown-up daughter, who of course was my stepmother. Daddy's wife then had a child which kept them on the run and he became my grandchild cause he was my daughter's son. My wife she is my mother's mother and that makes me blue because she isn't just my wife she's my grandmother too. <laughs> and if she is my grandmother then I am her grandchild and every time I think of it it nearly drives me wild, for now I have become the strangest case you ever saw. As husband to my grandmother, I am my own grandpa. Oh, I'm my own grandpa. I'm my own grandpa. It sounds funny, I know, but it really is so. I'm my own grandpa. Sing that with me. I'm my own grandpa already. I'm my own grandpa. I'm my own grandpa. I'm my own grandpa. It sounds funny, I know. It sounds funny, I know, but it really is so. I'm my own grandpa.
They gave me 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> that was two minutes, because I know this next thing is eight minutes. <laughs> I'd prefer not to use the microphone if that's okay. Can people hear me okay? Yeah. Um, this is something that I would just love to see, uh, to see, to hear on radio. It's called The Mountain Whippoorwill uh, by Stephen Vincent Benet. Up on the mountains, it's lonesome all the time. Soft wind slewing through the sweet potato vine. Up on the mountains, it's lonesome for a child. Whippoorwills calling when the sap runs wild. Up on the mountains, mountains and fog. Everything's as lazy as an old hound dog. Born in the mountains, never raised a pet, don't want nothing, and never got it yet. Born in the mountains, lonesome born, raised running ragged through the cockleburs and corn. I never had a pappy, maybe never should. I think he was a fiddle, made of mountain laurel wood. And I never had a mammy to teach me pretty please. I think she was a whippoorwill, was skipping through the trees. And I never had a brother nor a whole pair of pants, but when I start to fiddle, why, you got to start to dance. Listen to my fiddle, kingdom come, kingdom come. Hear the frogs, the chunk, and jug a rum, jug a rum. See the mountain whippoorwill, be lonesome in the air. And I'll tell you how I travel to the Essex County Fair. Now Essex County's got a mighty pretty fair. All the smarty fiddlers of the South come there with their elbows a-flying as they rosin up the bow for the first prize contest in the Georgia Fiddle Show. Old Dan Wheeler, with his whiskers and his ears, kingpin fiddler for nearly 20 years. And Big Tom Sargent, with his blue wall eye, and little Jimmy Weezer who could make a fiddle cry. All sitting around, strutting high, spitting proud. Listen, little whippoorwill, you better spread your wings. Tune a tune a tune until the judges tell the crowd, them that gets the most is claps wins the biggest prize. And everybody's waiting for the first Tweedledee when in comes a stop.